This is the smoking room. It's in the bachelor's wing at Bodston Manor and it took on its current appearance in the mid to late 1890s when Baron Ferdinand took the decision to decorate it in the Renaissance style and to use it as the setting for what he described as his Renaissance museum. And this was a collection that he'd been forming for some time and the core of which he'd inherited from his father, Anselm de Rothschild. Um, and which he treated differently because he displayed it in glass cases in the manner of a museum collection. Um, and it was in an interior that was special, that was exclusive and that people would be invited into to view the collection and different from the rest of the house. We have um, a document called The Red Book, uh, which is a, a photograph album that, that Ferdinand had published privately in 1897. And it is his document of the building um, and the appearance of Wadston in 1897. Unfortunately, in the Red Book, Ferdinand did not write about how he furnished the house. But what is interesting about the smoking room is that in the Red Book, there are six photographs of the interior and of his Renaissance collection in its glass cases. More photographs of this room than any other. And we think that's because at the time, Ferdinand was thinking about and compiling lists of items in that collection that he would later bequeath to the British Museum. The character of this room is different from other parts of the house, where in the main house Ferdinand uses 18th century patterns uh, for his textiles. Here in the smoking room he goes back to an early period of time, the period of time when many of the objects in his collection were actually made. So for example the wool silks and the curtains uh, go back to a 17th century pattern and he was also using actual textiles from the 16th and 17th centuries, many of which had an ecclesiastical origin to form textile hangings and coverings for furniture, which would be around the edges of the room and form the comfortable furnishings in the room, and that would then give a backdrop and a context to the items in the glass cases. Well, Ferdinand was very inspired by the idea of a treasury collection. Um, and this idea that although things were in glass cases, they could be elevated or they could be mounted in some way to enhance their status. And when we look at historic photographs of the smoking room in the 19th century, we see that not only were objects on plinths outside the cases, but also in the cases. Um, and here we have collected together quite a lot of these historic plinths. And you can see from the fact that they're covered in velvet and braid and all of these tassels and trimmings, that they were quite theatrical and luxurious objects in their own right. And these kinds of things would have been mounted on the walls with various sculptures or dishes on them. Some of these might have been in the cases with glass or jewellery standing on them. And in particular, we have a marble bracket, uh, which is one of four that is visible in one of the historic photographs of the smoking room. And it would have had a large oval shaped uh, Limoges enamel dish on top of it, probably resting on one of these. But these things survive here at Wadston because they weren't included with the Wadston bequest. This chair is a good example of how Ferdinand was using older textiles in the smoking room and creating 19th century pieces of furniture for comfort and for effect alongside his Renaissance museum. The chair is meant to look like it's from the 16th century, but in fact the frame, the barley twist frame, is a 19th century creation. The seat in the back of this chair have been taken from a type of ecclesiastical vestment called a dalmatic. And this is a T-shaped robe where you have a rectangular panel at the front and the back here, and then panels on each sleeve. And because of their shape, they lent themselves very well to being cut out and reused for seat furniture if the vestment was sold or confiscated or, or destroyed or stopped being used for whatever reason. And you've got red velvet and then embroidery and applied silk as well and lots of metal thread. So they're very luxurious objects in their own right. Ferdinand wrote very eloquently about collecting um, and how he felt that eventually collections in private hands would pass into public museums and that that was right, that people should have access to these wonderful collections. And this was partly his intention in making the Wadston bequest, that the collection that he had formed should stay together in his name and be available and accessible to the public. There was also a practical reason for him making the bequest in that death duties had been introduced just a few years before and he was very aware and concerned about the future of Wadston for his heirs and that this gift to the British Museum would offset some of that tax. 
The Wilson Request has been on display since 1900 in its own gallery, and the catalogue was published as soon as 1902 with wonderful photographs of highlights of the collection. And it's being redisplayed in June in a new gallery so that lots of people will be able to see it in its new location on the ground floor of the British Museum. Thank you.